their reproductive rights, LGBT rights, gun safety, racism, so much more. Now these are all issues that are valid to fight for, but to put it into perspective, the emergency will be affecting all of us, and it does not discriminate based on age, race, or other parts of our identities. It's the biggest threat to humans as a species, and we must remember that and keep climate activism at the forefront of our minds, because soon we won't be able to focus on anything else but survival on a dying planet. Not only this, but the issue of climate justice is not far off from the issues I have mentioned. It's connected to women's rights, it's connected to indigenous rights, redlining, poverty, and more. The climate crisis is an environmental issue, an ecological issue, and an issue of economic and political domination. At the same time, not all of us are affected equally. For example, race, even more than class, is the number one indicator for the placement of toxic facilities in this country. And communities of color and low-income communities are often hit hardest by climate change. It's forcing people from their homes and increasing hunger and poverty. As the NAACP has said, environmental injustice is about people who have died or are chronically ill due to exposure to toxins from coal-fired power plants and other toxic facilities. It's about the increase in severity of storms that will become the norm. It's about islands and coastal areas where people will be losing their homes due to rising sea It's about people living in the south who are breathing in toxic ash from mountaintop coal mining. It's about, in many communities, it's easier to find a bag of chips than a carton of strawberries. And it'll only get worse as drought and flooding affect the availability and price of our healthy food. Not only is fighting for this important to protect ourselves and our families, but also it's our duty because we need to combat climate change since countries are hit hardest that are often the ones that are least responsible. People in poor countries are at least five times more likely to be displaced by extreme weather than rich people in other countries. And now, we are demanding governments to adopt an emergency response to the climate crisis and the broader ecological crisis. Declaring a climate emergency is our critical first step to launching the comprehensive solution that we need. So you might be wondering, why focus on these local governments? What is it going to do for the huge global issue? Well, local wins will inspire other communities to follow and order for national mobilization. So we hope to inspire other cities to follow suit and for Connecticut to advocate for the Green New Deal for nationwide change and justice. So first, we need to get a New Haven declaration of a climate emergency with a commitment. So for example, California aims to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 40% by 2030. They plan to increase renewable energy production to 50% by 50% and double energy efficiency savings by 50% among other strategies. After this, we'll need our local elected leaders to become advocates for the emergency climate mobilization to the public and then to develop and implement changes. Over 540 local governments in nine countries have declared a climate emergency and have committed to action to drive down emissions at emergency speed. 